We're here today at the fourth forum on intercultural dialogue in Baku, Azerbaijan. And I'm here today with... Christophe Nick. Uh, what do you do? I'm producer for the big campaign uh, Generation What. And I'm here with you, sir. Can you tell us your name? I'm Tatsuhiro Beniko, uh, director of uh, programming at ABU as a Pacific Broadcast Union. And we're supporting this project. Thank you very much for coming here today. Um, tomorrow, there's a presentation on this project called Generation Quoi, or Generation Quoi. What in English. Um, you had the original idea. Can you explain to us what inspired you? Well, the first idea is that uh, nobody knows w what is and who is this generation between 18 and 34. Uh, it's completely new in, uh, in our societies. We are completely disconnected with them. So we wanted to create a tool where the young uh, would be able to make by themselves the portrait of their generation. And so it's, it's, it's a quite complex program. Uh, it, it was born in France. Uh, it was a mix of TV involvement with documentaries, big portrait of youngs, and but to push the young to go online on a specific website and to answer to 150 questions. And all these questions give to sociologists the capacity to, to make this portrait. So it's a, it's a mix of a, a, a TV program, a radio program, newspaper program, youth association involved in all this process. And in the same time, sociologists, scientists, who make, collect a very big data and uh, are able to give to the leaders the portrait of this generation. We see them um, uh, in their intimacy, but also uh, their family relations, their view on the future, on the society, etc. And when we did that in France, it had a such success. It was the biggest success in social TV we never had. So we decided to with the European Broadcasting Union to try to do it at the level of Europe. And then it has been made the, in uh, 2016. And it was much bigger than what we did in France because more than one million of young people in Europe participate to this program. And we have collected more than 83 million of answers. So it's an incredible tool which um, helps the young to find themselves, to compare to the other youngs, but it's also a tool for intercultural dialogue because suddenly we realize that the young in Germany, in France, in Spain, in Greece, or in Wales or Ireland can have the same expectation, the same view on the world, the same desire, the, and, and, and more of that. We have discovered that all this generation don't believe anymore in the model of society uh, where we are living in question of, of uh, environment, question of violence, question of, of uh, institutions, question of, well, all of what they expect from the world is not in their society. So we decided to, to push the experience first in the Arabic world, where we are planning to start the process in next December, we have eight countries involved, and in each country, it's the public service broadcaster who is driving the project with radio, newspaper, youth association, bloggers, internet, etc. So it's very complex, but we have Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Palestine, Lebanon, Egypt, and Jordania. And we are also working to develop all this program in Asia, in Oceania, and in Middle East. How do you get young people to answer questions online? That is what I want to know. Yeah, it's a mix of, of, of things. First, you engage the audience by using what they are listening. So th that's why it's very long and heavy, but we push the TV broadcasters to make special program for that. And it's the first thing that the youngs are watching, it's TV everywhere, even if they are more interested by internet, their first media is still TV. So you touch them by TV and the TV says to them, hey, go on the web and look at this website. When they discover the website, they discover suddenly questions that look like themselves and they like it. 
It's a tool for them first because they can compare and they need it. All the young everywhere ask to themselves, am I normal? Why am I alone? I don't want to feel alone. So uh, with, with this tool, they discover immediately because the machine put you in the, um, inside the data. Immediately you see where you are, if you are in the minority, majority, etc. So um, suddenly you discover you are like the other. And with the same tool, you can see from young people from another country and you see the students, the girls from 18, or you can go very deep in the survey to find yourself and to compare to the others. So in fact, it's funny, it's useful, it's respectful, it's serious, and it gives them a voice. So they like that. They like that very much. They appreciate the fact that it's no more journalists who speak for themselves. It's themselves who speak and, and, and it's direct communication. And when you do it with radio, when you do it with newspaper, when the young associations from the civil society are involved also, you can create debate in university, in the landscape, far away from every town. Uh, it's, it's, it's incredibly magical. It works. So the, your vision for this, what is the end uh, goal to actually answer the question, generation what? Yes, you answer the questions, but after that, you have the portrait of your generation. The sociologists, who, each country has a team of sociologists who work on the project. And after six months, one year, they are able to deliver a very scientific survey, which is very good not only for the leaders, or for, for medias, but also for themselves. They, they, they have the real portrait. And what we discover is this incredible generation gap, which is probably the highest we have seen in the world since the 60s. The, this generation is completely new, has new values, new behavior, new point of view. So we give them a voice. In few countries, we are able to listen to them most of the adults are afraid of the young. F afraid because they are better in technology, afraid because they are, they are hungry, and, uh, and because it's always like that. All people uh, are afraid of the young. So we try to create a tool of intercultural dialogue. We, we not only are speaking about it, we are practicing it. And that is very important. And now I'll turn to our broadcaster here. Um, can you explain to us, when it comes to implementation, actually producing programs that young people will watch, um, what do you take into account? Yeah, actually, um, uh, this project started uh, near a year ago, and after that, um, we started call for participation for our broadcasters uh, to join this uh, project from Asia Pacific regions. And so far, uh, nearly 10 um, broadcasters uh, from 10 countries show interest to be part of this project and including um, Afghanistan, uh, Nepal, Bangladesh, Pakistan, uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, and uh, Indonesia, and Japan, and also Mongolia. So um, from now on, uh, we would like to start uh, preparation for the questionnaires and also for the video module to be shown on, the, on this website. So uh, we have many things to do, but the, most of the broadcasters are so excited because this project is involving young, younger audience, younger generations, which most, most broadcasters would like to put much more focus. So um, this is going to be a very exciting project for all or the broadcasters in as a Pacific region. So as a broadcaster union, ABU would like to fully support this project with French colleagues and also with the support from UNESCO. In the Asia Pacific region, are the young really watching TV or they are more on social media? Yeah, actually, this is some controversial question, and of course, um, in some, uh, yeah, still, uh, in some countries, still, TV or uh, has some potential or a uh, um, big uh, power, but as you know, in many in many of our regions, uh, younger generations like to <laughs> I mean uh, go on on uh, social media and uh, internet. So we are losing um, some um, I mean, audience for the traditional media like radio or uh, TV. So, but this is going to be some transmedia project, as uh, Chris mentioned. 
we will do the campaign, of course, starting from their, their website, but also we will do the campaign through radio, TV, and other media. So this is going to be very, I mean, a, um, very interesting, very, I mean, exciting project. So hope we are many younger audience would, would, uh, would be, um, I mean, uh, answering the questionnaires, and also we can make use of uh, the result to further um, enhance our program up, um, program production for young audience. Are you going to involve young people in making the programs? Yes, I suppose. Uh, for example, maybe uh, younger audience can also join uh, making this kind of program. And also, of course, we know, we drag note their voice from the young audience, as not not only from the questionnaires itself. So maybe this is going to be a very <laughs> an interesting project. Thank you. So tomorrow um, there's a panel on Generation Quo. Are you presenting at the panel, and what will be your message? Well, different message. The first, the first of all is uh, uh, help us. The second is use us. Help us because this is uh, so, it's it become to be worldwide. So it's very expensive, it's, it's very deep, it needs a lot of commitment. So we need support of, of many organizations and uh, United Nations, that's sure of that. But use it also, it's a tool for everybody. It's a tool for peace, for dialogue, for understanding the generation between themselves. It's also a tool for teachers that you can have, you have so many questions which are directly relied by, uh, on, on, on spe topics very important like violence, like uh, equality, like uh, gender studies, like, uh, well, so many things which are really useful and use it also young people everywhere because this give you a voice and come on all medias, take this program for yourself because it's a, it's a way to reconnect with them, with this generation.